Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about how to play Underlord. We're specifically gonna be watching OG Amar, one of my favorite offlane players to currently watch. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna talk about this hero. The reason why I wanna do this is I think Underlord is one of the best pub heroes in Dota. He's a very simple formula, he's easy to execute on, and he's really good at saving your team when they decide that they should go high ground way before they should go high ground, because you can fiends gate them back to base or around the map. You can tell your team, hey, hello, Mr. PL. You're not even close to your hard timing. Maybe you should go for him the top wave. You can send him a nice portal to the top wave, send him off, you'll see him in a year, he'll be back with a heart, and you'll be ready to go. But nonetheless, we're going to watch Amar the F on his Underlord talk about how he snowballs on this hero. Because he goes to a really cool item build. He goes treads Atos into BKB. Let's talk about it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, first, let's talk about the starting item build. This game, he goes for three tangos, two gauntlets, a ring of protection, and an Iron Branch. The reason why he goes Ring of Protection other than, uh, rather than something like a Quelling Blade is just because he's against two right clickers. IO is all physical, at least in the early game, and so is CK, right? CK is also a hero that wildly reduces your armor, so Underlord is not really a hero with armor problems. Starting at five is not bad, but I think how Amar sees it is you never want to get dropped to zero armor. When you get dropped lower and lower, that's when armor becomes a problem because zero armor is 0% physical resistance. 7 armor is 30% physical resistance. You can see there's a huge drop off. Even something like 5 armor, I believe is around 22% physical resistance. So every single point of armor at these lower levels really, really matters. And the reason why this is particularly important here is because CK's reality rift reduces your armor by 4. So you want to stay as far away as possible from 0 in these types of lanes. That is why he picks up a ring of protection in this lane. On top of that, it will build into a later soul ring. However, you might be like, oh, speed, he's just rushing soul ring. Well, he's not. He actually goes bracer as his first item. And you'll see the clear idea of Amar in this lane is very, very straightforward. The general idea is actually not to completely bully out the CK, especially not within the early levels. It's just to build up damage on the E, get every single CS and every single deny. And frankly, as Underlord, that's pretty easy, and you should do the same thing. Next up, let's talk about Q usage. There's only really two main times I recommend you use Q. The first one is to secure the range creep. Your Q at level 1 is kind of a crappy ability, it doesn't do that much. However, what it does do is it prevents you from overcommitting on half HP range creeps. As we'll see in this clip here, Amar's going to walk up, he understands the play that the Rachio potentially has. Amar is stuck within 6 creeps, you do not want to tank 6 creeps even as a melee high armor hero, you still don't really want to. And on top of that, Dorachio can just hit him. Why? Because if Dorachio hits Amar, it's going to de-aggro these 2 creeps, the range creep will never be in last hit range, and Amar will get punished. But by using his Q here, it not only kind of clears up this mega wave that you don't necessarily want, it's too many creeps, too many creeps that can potentially be denied. Um, he clears that up and he secures the rage creep, doesn't have to overcommit his harm. The second instance in using your Q, which he doesn't even skill at level 3 by the way, I'll talk about why this is better, Asher Fiora, especially in this lane. The other time in which you use your Q is once it's level 2, then the max HP burn goes up by a full percent and the wave damage nearly doubles. So this ability becomes ridiculously stronger from level 1 to level 2. Like, don't burn your mana at level 1, you can use it for the range creep, but that's it. Other than that, you're waiting for your, your next spike. Now, why put two points in E? Number one, it doubles the damage you get per creep. So every time a creep dies around you, you get damage. You get four damage. So you want that. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's like in this lane, his only goal really is to completely grief the CS of Duraccio. And the reason why you can easily do that is level two Atrofiora reduces damage by 15%. Duraccio and CK in general has very high base damage. As a result, he's currently losing 11 damage, right? Putting him down to 67 damage. That's in comparison to the 95 of Amar. So as you can see, if you get decent at last hitting, especially when you buy this Bracer, it is very, and I mean very easy, to have a ridiculously good creep score in comparison to your opponent. 
All you have to do is just not over trade into the two heroes and you will dominate the game. Another time in which it's okay to use your Q as well is when your teammate is getting committed on because when someone's auto attacking someone, they're kind of standing still, right? So if Gaming Gladiators is going to be hitting Taiga, you're going to most likely hit them with four or five waves of your Q, which we'll see here. So this is kind of the best way to do some damage. He's going to trade out. Unfortunately, can't get a return kill, but it doesn't really matter. You can see instantly, instantly his mind space goes back to the creeps, back to the CS. This is what pros do that you do not, right? This is what they do that you do not. You are most likely just way over trading, right? Here he's over trading or, or not over trading, but trading hard because he's currently hitting for like 100 and something. This is a bug. He's not hitting for 200. All right, next up, let's talk about kill execution. Um, this is how you maximize damage on Underlord. And I know people are going to be like, Speed, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say you should click your Q and then auto attack them because that's all you can do. Let's actually get a little bit more advanced than that. So fight breaks out. Okay, he gets gone on. He pings out the CK. He understands that, okay, currently I'm hitting for 130 damage. This is bug right now. He's not hitting for 150. Doesn't really matter. He's going on to Rachio, attack moving, right? Please attack move his Underlord. Your hero is very slow at 290 movement speed. And that's kind of the downside of your hero. You're very, very slow. As a result, if you do not attack move, you will likely only get off two auto attacks, so you have to move in between attacks. After that, you'll notice he's not firestorming. Why? Why is he not firestorming? He's waiting for the disable from Taiga. On top of that, the more advanced thing to this is your Q, I mean your E, your autos, literally do more damage than your Q. Okay, at this point in the game, when you hit for like 140, your E is better, right? Your autos are better. Now, on top of that, your Q is a ranged ability. As a result, you want to use it when they are about to disengage or when they're stunned. So right here, you'll see he's still, even when this, you know, CK is disabled, doesn't Q yet. Honestly, I think at this point, he probably could in between auto attacks, right? You should always try to use your abilities in between auto attacks, but he uses it right here. I will say he canceled an auto, which wasn't great, but at the end of the day, it finishes off the kill. The idea is if you cast your Q, it is going to make you lose an auto attack. Why? Because you have to stop to cast it. You have to do the animation. Focus on your E, and when they're about to disengage or disabled, pop your Q. Don't just waste the Q. People are going to waste their Q early on. You're going to run out of mana, and you're going to be like, I don't know why I'm not dominating the lane like Amar. Now, let's quickly talk about items. He goes for Bracer and a Gloves of Haste. After that, he's going to pick up quite a bit of regen. When he picks up his Soul Ring, you see he buys an extra Clarity and Tango. Anytime you're completely out of mana, even if you have a Soul Ring, you should still buy a Clarity to make sure that you have enough mana for the next couple of minutes, not just every time you have Soul Ring up, right? Because Firestorm cooldown is definitely lower than Soul Ring cooldown, so you're going to still want the Clarity. On top of that, I like the Tangos, and you might be like, really? Late Tangos? Yeah, because you don't have a good way to sustain for the Soul Ring, right? You don't have a Ring of Health. Bracer's not going to do the job, and so I do like the extra set of Tangos. I'm a big fan of this. It's, it's a small thing, but these are the type of things that... You know, I'm just like, they excite me, right? I'm like, wow. Because this is the type of thing, I've been doing this for like a bit where I'll buy Soaring, I'll buy Tangos. I'm like, I wonder if anyone else does this. And then Amar does, I'm like, oh, I feel so good. But it, it's cool stuff, right? It, it, it's cool to see how like these ideas really matter and how everything compounds through small ideas like this. All right, after that, literally his laning stage is kind of simple. I mean, I, I didn't want to just show you guys him last hitting denying, but the reality is, is this, okay? This is Underlord. Look. Look, 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 if you do not overcommit, this should be you. If you cannot reliably do this in your pubs against players who, by the way, are much worse than Duraggio at last hitting, okay? I assure you, your 3k opponent is shit compared to Duraggio. If that is the case and you cannot reliably beat them on CS by a decent margin, you are just bad at Dota. You are bad at Underlord. So please instead focus on this. Buy your treads, buy your bracer, max your E, and make sure the enemy carry doesn't do any damage. This clip is actually hilarious. This is why I think Underlord is actually going to be seen a couple times now as a CK counter. It's a great matchup throughout the game. Even here, he gets pulled in, has plenty of armor right? Because Underlord's a pretty high armor hero, is currently hitting for like 162 and just mans up through an IOCK. You know how many heroes man up to IOCK? Like none. All right, this lane is brutal. He just mans up. Incredibly impressive stuff. And this max E build is very awesome. You might be like, oh, does he really actually max E? Yes, he literally maxes E. It's really cool. On top of that, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're playing Underlord is stuns. If they use their stuns, you can TP out. Your ulti is basically a free TP out. So right here, he skills it. He's like, okay, I can use my ability 
and he TPs out. This is great because he was low on HP, low on mana, and it saves your TP scroll, which is actually very expensive, 100 gold. So by using your ulti like this and then going back through, you get all of your resources back, and that's quite incredible. Now you might be wondering, Speed, when do I start to flash farm, right? When do I stop laning? I wouldn't recommend stopping laning until the enemy carry stops laning. So for as long as you can completely prevent them from getting like half the CS or three, like if, if you can make them miss three or four CS out of every single wave, you should just stay in the lane and do that. Like that impact is insane. If you can do that, do that. But you'll see in this clip here, the CK kind of starts jungling and then dodging. So he starts to farm the large camp and that's how you should look at it as well. Uh, that, that's going to make your games the best as possible. On top of that, you'll notice I love this item build. Oh, stats are just, you know, when I dream, Especially when I have like, you know, particularly lucid dreams, it's always just about buying stats. This is just, you know, this is what really stimulates me as a person. And you'll see here, it's just, oh, he has 1700 HP, incredible base attack time, just so, not not base attack time, just so much agi, so his attack speed is so high, especially with these shreds. And as you'll see here, just decimates Tarashi, who gets gone on, just eats it up, man. He just eats it up. Look at Ace's damage here. This is the crazy part. He has phase boots and like a couple of plus damage items. He's currently hitting for 90, right? Actually 89, which is nothing, right? He gets arena here. You're like, he's probably going to die with the Lich Shield and the damage reduction. He just eats it up. Tarachi is like, oh, maybe I can go back in. Huh. Joke's on you. You're hitting for like 100, right? I don't know. No, no, no. He's not hitting for 100. He's just not in range right now. He's probably going to hit for like 70. Yep. Hitting for like 70. Phew, that's, that's rough. So in the right games, when the enemy team is like, largely right click this maxi is devastating and then once again as we'll see before anytime you're low on resources ping your team say hey guys we're going on a trip the magic school bus back to the base here we go back in back out one thing you have to keep in mind is you cannot cast it uh in the fountain you have to cast it a little bit outside the fountain so you can't actually use it in fountains uh just be aware you might be like oh i can bait the enemy team you still can bait them to go into your base uh, because enemies can take the portal, funny enough, but in general, yeah, ju just use it to gain your resources and tell your teammates to do it and use it as well. Next up, what do you do as Underlord in the mid game? There's a couple of things you do. If no one on your team defends towers, you need to be the guy who defends mid tower, all right? In this game, they have a Lich, a Hoodwink, and a DK. He doesn't have to be that guy. So instead, what you want to do is be the guy who soaks up all the space on the map. As we'll see here, he's going to Firestorm the mid wave. Fire, I mean, Firestorm the large camp, the small camp, shift over for a kill. After that, he's going to clear the wave. After that, he's going to farm the Mud Golem camp. And basically, you're going to want to rinse repeat as long as you've won your lane. If you've won your lane and you've done a great job in the early game, you're going to have the luxury to play this area of the map. And that's why Dota is such a snowball effect based game. If you win your lane, you get to take more optimal farm. If you win your lane, you get ganked by three heroes and just live. This looks like a situation where almost anyone would die, but the Lich Shield comes out. He has 2000 HP and 35% damage reduction, eats it up, lives the gank, sets up for the Mars kill, and I think they end up killing everyone here. Yep, the Atos. Ah, oh, it's brutal. The Ember couldn't move. Such a hard counter to these spirits, right? If you don't know what I'm talking about in team fights, basically what you do is you lead with your pit, then you Q. Because when you W, it sets up enough time for your Q, then you Atos, right? And this is how you maximize the damage plus root. Sets up, gets on top of the Ember. Then the pit re-roots, right? Also, Io gets rooted. The CK gets rooted, which is why this year is such a hard counter to CK. It's impossible for him to run in and fight. So he just gets trapped and destroyed by the Firestorm. And the damage reduction is incredible. It's a great matchup, really. I, I, I do expect pros to consider this in the future. I, I think it's fantastic. And we've seen this from OG here. Fight ends! And what do they do? Yeah, buddy! Back to base! Everybody's full HP. It's actually crazy. I mean, the, 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 the tempo you can play with this is nuts. And after that, after the fight ends, he's back to farming. Because the reality is this Underlord doesn't set up plays. He's not some giga ganker. He's an area controller. You are an area controller, right? You do not just run around trying to bully people. Make people run into you. Gain advantages by clearing the top wave, clearing mid wave, and then clearing the nearby camps. And then when a team fight breaks out, you should be so farmed that when they go on you, you live. That has happened twice now. If you think that is an accident, you don't understand Dota. Now you might be wondering, Speed, why BKB? Well, honestly, the main reason is, it's pretty simple. You just want to click people. Like the thing about Underlord is you can click really, really hard. You can also see he has treads and take a look at his neutral item. 
it's a Quicksilver amulet. He's actually wanting to right click, and Underlord's biggest issue as a right clicker is his movement speed. It's bad. He also went treads, no phase boots, which means it's particularly bad. And as a result, as long as you can get on top of people and you can root them three times, if you're hitting while they're rooted for like six seconds and you're hitting for 300, which is like what you can be if you're consistently farming, you're going to chop people down. You're going to shred. Most carries actually cannot man up to you in the early game. Most carries can't man up to you until like the 30 minute mark due to your damage, your damage reduction. So it's just something to think about. I love this build from Amar and it's so good in pubs because it's a build that enables you to be much stronger than your average Underlord, right? Your average Underlord is very, very team reliant, which isn't a horrible thing. This build just really allows you to pop off and have a shit ton of frontline impact, especially when the enemy team is very magical damage based, which I would say Gaming Gladiators kind of is, but he's more so buying it this game just so he doesn't get kited. He can just like run through the arena, not get CK stunned, not get rooted, not get techies disarmed, and so on and so on, and just punch people down. All right, let's take a look at his first major team fight. He's also going Hurt as an next item, which is very questionable in my opinion. But all right, nonetheless, let's get into it. Fight breaks out. At this point, he's just kind of being a bully. Once again, same combo, Pit of Malice into the Q, into the Atos. By the way, let's quickly talk about talents. He takes five armor at 10. I don't really love it, but I get it. You don't really buy any armor items with this build. So having the plus five armor is great. The Firestorm Radius is honestly a good talent. So I'm a little bit on the fence about this one, but this game he's against quite a bit of physical and has no armor item, so I can get behind this. At 15, he takes the Firestorm cooldown. The Pit of Malice AoE is good, but I think the Firestorm cooldown is just too good because you're you're always farming. Like realistically, if you're playing this hero has you, how you should be, you're consistently farming the wave, the camps, the wave, the camps, right? So the cooldown on the Firestorm is better. At level 20, this kind of just depends on the game. If they're all right click, after you are attack damage reduction, absolutely. Brings it up to 50% damage reduction, which is wild, right? Wild. However, if they're just really, really tanky, then you could take the burn damage. But in general, I like the 15% attack damage reduction a bit more. And at level 25, once again, this one depends. If your teammates are very much right click based, then the atrophy at like euro bonus is very good. If you don't know what that means, basically anytime someone's near you, they get 50% of this bonus number, right? Because Underlord, when a heroes or creeps die around him, gets damage. He basically shares it with his teammates with that talent. However, the Pit of Malice uh, route is very, very long. It is very notable considering it's basically 1.2 seconds extra route because it, it goes off twice or 1.3, my mistake. And it's on, in an AoE. So that talent is, is pretty solid. But as we'll see in this team fight here, he gets gone on. He's incredibly tanky. I think he ends up getting committed on pretty hard here. Ends up being a bit of a weird engagement, but you'll see the BKB come out into play because ends up getting gone on, and usually this is where you die, right? Yeah, you're pretty tanky, but you eventually will go down because you're the frontliner, but he pops his BKB, and as you'll see, he's gonna find someone he can chop down. Doesn't really want to go on Mars, the guy's too tanky, he has bulwark, blah blah blah, but he finds Tofu on the side here and just rips him to shreds, and you can do the same thing in your team fights as well. You can bait the initial go, pop your BKB because you have 3k HP and you probably won't get bursted, and then you kill off some support or low armor hero. All right, and that's gonna be the end of today's video. I do wanna show you guys, just end the video on a little clip of him just chopping Duraccio into pieces. As you'll see here, it's like, it's honestly just very impressive. Look at this right click damage, hitting for 210 after resistances, putting the Firestorm down, which is also gonna do about 200 per tick to the CK, just chonking this guy to death. Uh, yeah, it's just like, to me, this is a build that absolutely can work. It's a build that I think makes a lot of sense. Obviously, he's doing it in a pro game, so he believes in it. Um, but I, yeah, this was a replay that I was very impressed by. It's a hero that's a little bit unconventional right now. But at the end of the day, I think it's a hero that has a lot of potential in the right matchups. It's very good against a lot of the meta spirits right now. It's very good against CK in particular. Um, I, I would say there's some carries in the meta that I don't love it against, such as the Monkey Kings. But obviously, if you could pick after or you get a little bit lucky and all pick, then you can have some good matchups. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.